So when we are talking about time complexity, we do not measure time com complexity in terms of number of seconds or milliseconds required to run on operation. Rather, we are interested in the number of steps required to run specific instruction set. And why? Because it's the total time taken or is also depending on some external factors like the compiler that we are using, the processor speed. So we are measuring the time complexity independent of external factors and we are only concerned about the time or the number of steps that are required to run an algorithm. And their impact on the size of the input. So if your input is increasing, what will be the effect of that on the same algorithm? So that is your time complexity. We are not concerned with how much compiler takes the time, how much time is taken by the processor, because if it, we have a good proce uh, processor, a program can run efficiently. When we are running on CPU, it is a bit slow as compared to your GPU. So these factors do not count. We are more concerned about the actual algorithm set, set of steps. And space complexity, intuitively, it is a total memory space that is required by the program for its ex execution. For example, how many steps require your mem uh, data to be stored in a temporary memory? For example, when you are swapping, so how many swaps are required and how much space is required for that integer or data to be stored. So we are more concerned about the memory space that is required by the program. And both of these complexities are calculated as function of input size. As we have studied, the running time of an algorithm depends on the input and the nature of the input and it generally grows with the size of the input. So the running time of an algorithm is measured as a function of input size. Of, for example, your input size is n. So what impact does this size has if it is increasing? What will the time complexity become with increasing input size? And it is measured in terms of steps of primitive operations. So this is an essential term. The primitive operations. It comes boils down to these primitive operations or the steps that are performed in your algorithm. And as I mentioned earlier, they are independent from the machine. They are only concerned or related with the algorithm design. So what are these elementary operations or primitive operations that we are talking about? For example, your subtraction, addition, multiplication, comparison algorithm, comparison steps or equality steps or array access steps. So these are your primitive operations and we count these steps. How many of these steps are performed in your algorithm? This is the measure of time complexity. For example, in this, we have an input array and we need to estimate the numbers that are stored in the input array. So we given a function of sum where input is your array and totally the in size is n and we are going to consecutively add the data stored in the array and return the sum. How do we analyze this? So how many primitive operations or elementary operations are performed in this algorithm. So this initialization
these three are only executed once. 1, 2 and 8 are only executed, in initialization only done once. Here again for the for loop, you are going to initialize your i variable only once. And then once you go into the loop, this condition is checked each time and for after every execution iteration, it is updated by one, one increment. So, how many times do we initialize? We initialize only once, one time. Here also only one time. And how when the return statement is it only executed only once. And what about the for loop? What are the other primitive operations here? What else? The comparison when it stays less than n, n is given. When is it when it is added, equality and array access, all of these they will be done each time for one iteration. And total iterations how how many iterations do we have? 0 to n minus 1 or n iterations. So this will be executed n times. So a total of 5n for the perimeter operations within the loop. 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 they will be executed 5 times and 3 for these statements this initializations and return statement plus 3 so the complexity function for this algorithm in terms of n where n is the input size it is 5n plus 3 so f of n is 5n plus 3 in terms of primitive operations. So what about if you start increasing the size of n or the size of the input? So for initially if we say n is 10, we will, this is capital N. So 5 times 10 plus 3 is 53 steps. If 5 times 100 then we will have 503 steps and so and so forth. So we can see that n is growing. The number of steps grow in linear proportion to n. So there is a linear relationship or linear increase in the size or the number of steps corresponding to the input size. So what is important in this statement 5n plus 3? As n gets larger, very large, for example, if we take n as 1 million, then your plus 3 is insignificant, right? And 5 is inaccurate as different operations require various amount of time and also do not have any sufficient importance. So even 5 times if you're going to multiply, it is not that significant. And the fundamental relationship that we have is the time is linear in n as n gets larger we focus on the value of n which is the higher order term and we drop the lower order term such as plus 3 and then also we drop the constant coefficient of the higher order term here we have 5n plus 3 the higher order term is 5n so we remove or the lower order term if you want to my other complexity and we call this asymptotic complexity we ignore the lower order term and also the coefficient c that we have here c is 5 and plus 3 is a constant that we have added so c is your coefficient we also ignore that and we say that complexity 
can be measured in terms of n where n is your given input input so input size increases or complexity increases linearly so phi 3 plus n time bound is said to grow asymptotically like n this gives us an approximation of the complexity of the algorithm and we have ignored a lot of things here a lot of details for example what is your machine type are we running on a processor CPU or are we running on a GPU FPGA what kind of hardware we are involved with what kind of compiler we are using so we are concentrating on the bigger picture here we are not going into the details okay so what are the asymptotic rotations to my ear the for what to measure the complexity and mostly we are interested in the time complexity so we have the big O notation the famous big O notation ON we have seen in algorithms with linear complexity we say ON with quadratic we say ON squared we are familiar with when we have nested for loops if we have two for loops we say that the complexity is on square if we have a single for loop we say the complexity is n so this big o notation we are most familiar with and it is the measure of the upper bound of the time complexity remember this it gives the upper bound the worst case going towards your worst case and then we have the omega notation which gives us the lower bound for running the algorithm lower bound the lower value lowest value that we can go then we have the theta notation it gives us the tighter bound and we can also say it is the average bound for our algorithm so let's first understand what is the upper bound, lower bound, and the tight bound class of algorithm complexities. So these are your classes of complexity. Going from lower to higher. So if we have a complexity of one, is the best in terms of primitive operations and going towards the logarithm then you have your n then we have the squared term which is higher complexity cube root it has much more higher complexity then comes our polynomial terms they have higher complexity than your squared terms so starting with the constant which has the lowest class which is the lowest class function which has the lowest complexity then we come up with linear then quadratic going towards your polynomial fun class of functions which has the higher complexity so these are the some well-known function complexities that we have and we are going to study the asymptotic notations for our complexity where big O represents your upper bound then we have big theta which gives us the lower bound for our complexity then we have 
sorry, big omega. This is your omega. Then we have theta, which represents the tighter bound or the average bound. We can also say it is the average bound. So first we are going to discuss big O notation. We have the function f of n and O represents where g of n is another function, f of n is another function. If there exists a positive constant C and N naught such that f of n is less than equal to a constant multiplied by a function for all values of n that are greater than N naught. So if we have a function, let's suppose f of n is 2n plus 3. Now we need to find according to this definition f of n less than equal to c g of n. According to this definition we need to find some value that is less than or equal to this value where n is greater than your n naught. So if we consider here 10 n. So this for n is greater than equal to 1 this will always be true. So if we put n is 1 this becomes 5 which is less than equal to 10 correct. So we can say for this function f of n and this is another function g of n which are represented in terms of n and c is your 